It's my pleasure now to introduce Schlegel Villages. And Jamie, you could say a few words about yourself and then take it away. Thank you. Okay, so my name is Jamie Kellenbeck, and I'm a registered kinesiologist and the Program for Active Living Coordinator with Schlegel Villages. Schlegel Villages is a family owned and operated uh, chain of long-term care and retirement continuums. Um, and I wanted to take you on a bit of a journey about uh, how we created our safe lift and transferring program. Um, so back in 2003, I'm going to use that as an example, as that's when I started with the company. Uh, we were opening up uh, a few long-term care homes, and basically our orientation consisted of training team members um, how to use the lifts, and that's it. Uh, I remember ten attending the training and it was provided by our supplier and that was as much as we got as far as how to safely lift and transfer our residents. Um, the unique thing that we have is that we hire kinesiologists within our villages, which I'm quite proud of. Um, we have the, the kinesiologists work with our, our residents to improve their, their overall health, but part of our role is also to provide education to our teams and our residents and families. And one of those things in the beginning was to provide back care um, sessions as well as other topics of interest. Um, the kinesiologists do also assess our residents for their minimum transfer status. So that was one of the roles that I had when, we, when I initially started the company. Um, what became apparent was just the um, lack of consistency or unsure of what the, the skills and knowledge of all of our team members were. So asking re or team members to do certain transfers and not knowing whether or not they had the skills or the confidence in order to do that. So that was a real um, eye-opener for me when I started. Um, and what it did was just ask the question, where, what is everybody's base knowledge? What are they trained in school? Um, who provides ongoing training as well as, you know, what is the best practices? So as an organization, we determined that um, because we hired KINS, it was a great way to use their, their knowledge in movement and body mechanics um, to help facilitate that training. So a group of us KINS, now I think there was only about seven of us at the time, but we attended the Handle with Care Train the Trainer sessions offered through CBI, um, and then we um, replicated that again later on to add some more champions as well as our quality improvement nurses. From there, that training, we developed our policies and procedures as well as um, other guides and we started facilitating training within our villages to our frontline nurses and PSWs. So very much focused on the nursing department. Oh, I should have, did I do that? Oh, all right. Um, and the kinesiologists really did try to keep a record and try to aim to get our 100% of nursing and that's what was always a struggle every year. Um, as we started to add our ceiling lifts and hygiene lifts, we added that into the fold. So by 2006, we were on our way to really standardizing our practices within our villages, creating training guides, quizzes, and our education program. <clears throat> so the next step, um, 2010, we were, as an organization, under a culture change. Um, and really looking at providing cross-functional teams. Everyone having a role to play with resident-centered care. So we began training in our newer homes, um, all team members on safe lift and transferring techniques because everybody actually does do something with residents. So it could be recreation, it could be food services. Everybody actually is working with our residents, so why shouldn't they get the same best practice? So we started doing that. Uh, we also, as an organi organization, looked at how can we um, bring more focus to our mandatory, mandatory education, ensure that our teams are getting what they need year after year. Uh, so we, we investigated and um, started our uh, online learning portal, which is our marketplace. And from there, all of our training modules were updated and uploaded onto the, uh, onto the system as an alternate. From there, the teams and the leadership could then track and trend all of the education. Um, fast forwarding to even this year, as we start to welcome new villages into our fold, uh, we actually train all team members on pre-opening on how to safely um, use the mechanical lifts, transfer, and reposition our residents. So everybody gets up before they actually start working with our residents, which is great. Um, 
uh, additional training. So as new team members come into our, our organization, we provide the training, but they can take training um, two ways ongoing. So it's either in person where they receive the content, the quiz, and the demonstration, or they can do a two-step process where they can take some of the content online if they learn better that way, complete the quiz, and then get a refresher and the demo demonstration with the kin afterwards. All right, so just a little bit about um, what the kids are doing. So we do assess the transfer status for all of our residents. So this is the minimum amount that the team members should safely transfer that resident. So we identify it with a logo placed in their room and update that onto the plan of care. Um, we always encourage our teams to, that they can always safely go up and transfer, just like you were saying, to go into the room, depending on how they're feeling or how the resident is, go up in the amount of assistance that's, um, might have been set by the logo, but they can't come down. So if somebody's been assessed as a two-person or a lift, that they shouldn't go in there alone, even if they think that they have the skills for that. So this is just a, an example of our decision tree that team members and our kids can use to help determine what that minimum status is. So basically, if someone's full weight-bearing, they're typically a one-person or an independent transfer. If they're partial weight-bearing, they would go to a two-person or a sit-to-stand lift, otherwise it would be a total mechanical lift. So it's a really rough outline. The beauty of it is that the kids can then work with the teams to determine what makes sense for both those team members and the resident from there. So I'm just going to go quickly over some of the training that we do. So we do train on manual transfers, um, and this is provided both formally and form informally. Um, what we do train is how to optimize the positioning of both the resident and, and the caregiver. So making sure that our residents are in a good position prior to even starting so that they can participate as much in the transfer as they can themselves. And then giving the team members the tools on how to maintain safe body mechanics for themselves as well. Um, we do utilize different um, pieces of equipment based on the resident needs, such as using their walkers so they can provide more support to themselves transfer discs, transfer poles, things like that, but we would work with the teams as we go along. We do train on one and two person transfers, um, side by side, uh, two person transfer, minimum assist with one, and both pivots. For mechanical lifts, we do have um, a variety of mechanical lifts available on each of our neighborhoods. So we have sit to stands and total mechanical lifts. Um, there are a number of villages that do have ceiling lifts, but they're not in everybody's room. Uh, most of our, our spa rooms do have um, some sort of ceiling lift, but it's not widely used. Um, we do uh, teach the teams how to use the lifts properly, how to maneuver them safely, um, ensuring that they're not twisting or using poor body mechanics. And we also uh, research what types of slings are, are you know, more, more comfortable, um, put the residents in better positioning, as well as if we have difficulties applying slings, then we would look at other um, options, such as slip fits or things like that. So we do work with our vendors to, to help us identify different types of slings based on those residents. Um, for bed repositioning, uh, we do train on um, just some basic uh, procedures uh, using the, the um, oh, what am I gonna say here? <laughs> the draw sheets. Um, as well as repositioning sheets, repositioning slings. Um, we teach uh, how to properly weight shift and keep uh, good body mechanics, communicate with each other, um, and really use those devices based on you know, the resident needs and the, the team member needs as well. So we want to encourage resident participation as much as possible and not do for them when they can help out as well. And utilize the, the bed systems as well. So if they, the, bed, the head of the bed goes up to use that if they're getting them up out of bed, or if they raise or lower to a height that's more um, appropriate for that resident. So with repositioning, we do teach how to roll, how to move them up and down and laterally, as well as how to sit them up on the edge of the bed safely. We also train on chair repositioning, so how to, and typically that's a front and back method, but how to again maintain good body mechanics while we're doing that. Um, using uh, one-way slides for those residents that slip in the chair, consulting to OT if we need to on um, you know, improving the seating position of our residents. Hygiene lifts is something else that we have added to the lift certification program, um, and mostly that is online. 
Uh, just we do use uh, Arjo equipment uh, for our bathing, so using the Corendo for an ergonomically friendly way to shower our residents, as well as the Alenti to help get our residents in and out of the tub. Now with our Alenti, we have mandated that we have two team members always present when they're going in and out of the tub, um, and that's mainly for safety um, of the team members and the resident themselves. So our policies were developed based on the initial training um, and updated uh, to reflect you know, what our current practice is. Uh, we do provide step-by-step -step procedures as well as um, decisions trees to help with the assessment process. Um, so education, like I said, we do have our marketplace where we have online uh, presentations. What we do is we're able to um, sign people up into a knowledge program to include what they're needed. So if anyone that's a direct care team member would be signed in in long-term care into five modules. So they get transfers, lifts, repositioning, uh, ceiling lifts, as well as hygiene lifts. And if they're in retirement, they get uh, manual transfers, repositioning, and um, mechanical lifts because they don't have the other. So we also have developed handouts and quizzes. So the handouts would be take home resources for our teams, which explains the definitions of the procedure, any sort of body mechanics that are appropriate, as well as um, the procedures themselves, so step by step. We have uh, quizzes to help test the knowledge of our team members, um, and we try to update that with uh, what is reflected within the practice of our home. So, really understanding what are struggles that they might be having, we might bring that back into the education as well as the quiz so that they can, they can see and use their critical thinking processes to, uh, to make the right choices. So training, um, our team members are trained on orientation um, and it's not just one time a year, we actually train throughout the year, so every month we're, we're providing training. Everybody's on a different education cycle, so when they finish their training, they're automatically re-enrolled for to be um, completed within the next year. Um, we also provide training based on if a team member has had an injury or if maybe they don't have um, that confidence or they need some a bit of a refresher, we do provide training as well for that. Um, and we do train our students that come into our homes. So there is a real big uh, gap in what is provided within the schools and what our practices are. So we have a couple of PSW schools within our, our villages as well as others that are completing their, their placements. So we're actually providing training to those students before they come and, and uh, do their placement with us. So this is just an example that we can um, track. So this is just an organizational view. Find out who's past due, who hasn't completed their training in the last 12 months. And we brought more focus to that for our leaders because they actually report out on that every month and they discuss it at their monthly BPR, which is their business process review. So it's something that um, we're able to track now and it's providing the discussion, which before we, w we didn't have that ability. So there's a lot more talk about it. So moving forward, um, our groups of, of kinesiologists meet every, every other month and we actually discuss some of the trends that we're seeing within our villages. So we use that to provide that knowledge to the rest of the organization, but also to help develop you know, any sort of talking points or um, important pieces that we need to, to bring to, the, to our team members' attention for the upcoming year. So we, we just met a couple of months ago and you know, we've got a lot of information to bring forward to our training that's gonna be uh, taking place over the next year. Um, and I think um, as, as Kins and others in our organization, we're always on the lookout for other innovative um, tools that we can use to help improve our resident safety as well as our team member safety. safety. We attend different <coughs> conferences and really put to test um, the lifts and the, the slings and other um, equipment that are, that are used for uh, safe handling. And that's it.